Welcome to beautiful southern Spain. Welcome to the launch of BMW's new R12 9T. Now forget about the complicated name. Let's look at the bike. That is the air-cooled 1200 lump that we're very, very familiar with that has always been bulletproof and robust. That remains, but they've changed where the air box is and the air intake pipes to clean it up and to just give it a visually new look. It's also a complete new chassis, new rear shock, new forks, more electronics, more rider aids, and a fraction lighter. Most of the airbox and engine tweaks have been done to get it through Euro 5 Plus, which is quite a difficult job considering the actual date of that original engine. But we're here in beautiful conditions in Southern Spain to put the bike through its paces. First impressions, I think it looks amazing, but let's see what it's like on the road. Do you know what? I don't know if I'm getting old, but I'm really enjoying this. It's just back to basics. Throttle, air cooled, grunt off the bottom. Plenty of grunt off the bottom. Shaft driven. <laughs> Lovely bit of road as well. Handling is good. It's not sitting down in the corners when you throw it in. I'm not normally a fan of continental rubber, but today, no complaints in these conditions. Oh, what a bike. So just flicked it into dynamic, just to give it a bit of a whirl on these cool looking roads. You don't need gears. Just third, I think third. I think the guys at Bike World sent me to do this bike because I'm the oldest member of the group because I actually quite like it. I don't know if it's the simplicity, I don't know if it's the styling, I don't know if it's the looks, or maybe it's the fact that I'm getting old, but I just really like it. First of all, the styling. I like the fact that BMW have got kind of rid of a lot of the intake, a lot of the tubing. It's really simple. There's a lot of bikes in this retro category that were air cooled and now are water cooled because they're searching for performance and to get it through Euro 5 Plus. But this is still air cooled. It's still simple. It's still basic. And when I got on it, it's still got that kind of old air-cooled boxer 1200 little rock as you start it it's still got a few vibrations still pulls a little bit on the shaft drive that to some people is a negativity to me i kind of like it i kind of remember what the old 1200 gs was like because i'm old enough to remember doing the launch of that bike and it rekindled those memories and i remember wow that bike was really good there was a reason it sold so well and it was because of this air-cooled lump but BMW have really done some work with this engine because to get it through Euro 5 Plus was a really tough task, but they've also revised the fueling and they've changed where the torque is. The torque is so low. Third gear, just staying there. Just pulls from two or three. You get a lovely kind of air box noise as well. I mean, how nice is that? Brushing these little tall grass on the apex. <laughs> From 2000 RPM, it's just boar, and it just drives to three, to four, and then to five, and that's all you really need, is that two to five for a really brisk ride. Sure, if you want to be like Chris, you can turn off the traction control, which you can do on the fly, dump the clutch in second gear, and it'll wheelie in second and third. It's got plenty of power. It's got over 100 horsepower, which compares to the other bikes in this class. But for me, what makes this bike is that kind of bop, that lovely noise you can now get from the airbox, which is now underneath the seat. That drive you get from that boxer engine, the simplicity of it. And then when you park up, look at it. That's a good looking bike. I really like it. Every time I got off the bike, I was like, oh, I like the wheels. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like the switch gear. I like what they've done there. And it is the most expensive bike in this class, but you can see where the money's been spent. They haven't just said, well, where BMW, let's put a big price on it. They've said, look at the components, look at the lovely finish that they've got. And yes, it is expensive, but the quality of finish, when you look at the bike, it does look lovely. You know, everything is neatly done. The way all the gaps are, the fasteners, it's just really nice. Handling terms, 
I was expecting us to be probably decking it out a few times, like most retro bikes are in this range when you start to ride it fast, but it doesn't. I thought that the Continental tires were gonna be a bit iffy, but they weren't. I had so much fun just riding this bike at a really nice, brisk pace, feeling safe and secure. And you've got lean sensitive traction control, lean sensitive ABS, if you do get a little bit carried away. But this morning, I was a little bit, I wasn't overwhelmed. I was a little bit like, what's it gonna be like? It's just a air-cooled old 1200, but I've just fallen in love with it. It's just a lovely jacket and jeans, hit any road, ride at a brisk pace, really, really comfortable. For me, as a short rider, I can get two feet firmly on the ground. If you just see what the taller riders think, because for me, it fits. The bars are nice and wide. I like the stature. I like the feel of it. The seat is comfortable. Feels a lot, maybe it's because the engine is like the main part of the weight and that's really low and you can get that underslung kind of feeling. And it's got a lovely balance at low speed, which to be fair, that's what the old 1200 GS had. Shaft drive, no maintenance. I am running out of good things to say about this bike. The suspension is sporty, but not firm, and it's firm, but not spongy and soft. You can really throw this bike and have some fun with it. Never touch the pegs, never touch the ground clearance, and on the odd occasion, you can really stretch the cable and have some fun. Really thoroughly enjoyable bike to ride. It almost feels wrong to hang off it. It's just fun to just turn and kind of steer. There's a whole heap of accessories so you can personalize this bike. The subframe is completely different, so you can chop and change that. You can put twin seat on it, single seat on it. A really attractive kind of 80s nose fairing that you can put on it. There's a lot you can throw at it, but you're gonna have to spend some dollar. For me personally, I prefer the standard analog clocks rather than the new digital display. Some will like that, some won't. That's a personal thing, but that's the thing about this bike. It's a personal thing. Some people are gonna love the looks, some people aren't, but for me, I thought it was going to be like a 6 out of 10 bike, 7 out of 10 bike, a bit hipstery, a bit retro, meh. But no, that's a 9 out of 10 bike. I really, really enjoyed that, and I can't wait to have another go on it. I do like this road, though. Oh, my word. What a road. <laughs> it's like a... It's just like a cartoon road. I come to Malaga every other week and I keep finding roads that I've not ridden before. Oh, this is lovely. What a nice and easy and effortless bike to do it on. 